discuss the the Focusrite Mix Control, which is a piece of software you get with the um, the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40. Um, it comes up it comes up with uh, the ones from the Sapphire upwards, basically, and you get this piece of software with it. So I just want to go through um, a few things, just down to how the kind of the basics of it, on how to work it and how to obviously set it up with your your door and any other hardware that you've got as well. Yeah, I uh, as I said, I wanted to talk about the uh, the mix control system that uh, Focusrite has with this uh, piece of equipment. Now, as you can see behind me, uh, I've got the uh, I've got my speech here, my speaking here, going into. Uh, my door, which is Pro Tools 12. And what's in front of you may look a bit confusing right now, and it was to me when I first got it, but when you get kind of used to it, it, it does make a lot of sense. So we'll go through the first, um, first bit. So across the top here, you've got these tabs, which is Mix 1, Mix 3, Mix 5, Mix 7, and so on. And basically what that is, is it's the different mixes you can get. Um, so if you've got different uh, headphone mixes. So let's say you are recording a, a band live. It's just a live recording. It's not multi-tracked. Um, you, they may want different headphone mixes to kind of get the, uh, kind of like, let's say a guitarist, you may want more of his guitar and less drums or less bass. Uh, or drummer may want his kick drum, his snare drum, and everything like that. You can tailor you can tailor it to uh, to each of your performers and each each to your, each of your musicians. So you've got uh, a, a good amount of mixes there, and as really as many as you need to. So uh, that's that's really good in that way. So when setting it up, I mean, also you can just set setting it to the default already will help it to. Uh, we'll just obviously make sure it's set up. But obviously, if you add on more equipment and more uh, mixes, then that's where it gets a bit confusing. So in here, you can see my vocal coming in at uh, number one, analog in one, which corresponds to the, the focus rate uh, interface. And then, as, as, as you are aware, I've got nothing coming in in the next uh, six to well, eight uh, in inputs either. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can, let's say, when doing a headphone mix, you may want to send it through to your, your door and then come out and then get the mix from there. But then that can cause a lot of latency because of obviously the amount of time it takes to get processed and, and so on. So you've got two outputs here. You've got door one and door two, which is the levels that's coming out of the actual uh, of your of your door, obviously, and then you've got the mix, the main mix. So that is basically what's coming out of your copper speakers properly. So let's say if you're playing something from the internet, then it will only come out of the mix, not the door. Anything that's coming out of the door, like my vocals here. Uh, it will come out of the, uh, the the door mix. However, if you don't want that to be uh, coming through in the headphone mix because of latency, you can set the output of that to um, basically to to the analog in that you want, rather than the the door, so that it dramatically reduces the latency um, of that. And you can obviously do that against the uh, the other inputs that are there. So if we go down uh, to this bit, this is the main output. So that's my, uh, output one and output two on the back of your Focusrite product. So on here, as you can see, it's coming from mix one uh, left and mix one right, which is obviously corresponding to this here. So that will obviously play anything that's uh, coming out of the of your of your computer, essentially, whether that be on the internet, your iTunes, and so on, and then here, this is your extra outputs. So, on your Focusrite product, you'll have uh, your headphone sends in the front, your headphone mixes at the front. 
So I've got on mine, I've got two. And I think on most you've got two actually. Uh, you've got two headphone mixes. So line output seven and line output eight corresponds to headphone send one. And then line output nine and line output 10 corresponds to headphone send two. And so basically in that sense, you can tailor, set it up uh, to tailor made your, what you want to hear, what you want to listen to. So I could say, I may want just what's coming out of my door in the first uh, headphone send, but then what's coming out of my uh, computer, let's say someone just wants to listen to YouTube or something like that, then that will come out of, uh, you can set that up to come out of headphone two so to listen to something else, which is hmm, not too bad, quite decent, but that's theoretical anyway. I've got a processor, uh, an effects processor linked up as well. Now this is where it kind of struck me a bit. This is where it kind of got a bit confusing for me. I was trying to figure out how my, how to set it up, but I just plugged it in and I thought, plug it in, on you go, sorted. It's a bit more complicated than that because when I plugged it in, I thought, right, let's have a listen, let's give it a go. It was feeding back all, all the time and it was just like, I couldn't, couldn't figure out for me why it was doing that. And what I realized was these two outputs here were set to mix one and uh, to mix one left and mix one right. So essentially anything that was coming through it was just getting fed back and back and round and round and round, obviously hence causing feedback. So I had to then, and then figured out, took me a wee while to, to be honest, but I figured out what I needed to do. So I had to kind of make the mix control here, talk to my door to say, right, on my output of door uh, of my door, I want output three and output four to go to line output three and line output four. So that corresponds to the outputs on my desk, on my uh, on my Pro Tools, which is number three and number four, um, going to. I'll show you here actually. So let me just uh, get it up. So here I'm sends A to E. Um, well, it's recording at the moment, unfortunately. Right, maybe I can't show you. Uh, but essentially, getting the send set up, output three and four would then correspond to line output on the back of my uh, control here. That will then correspond to um, the output three and four. So it kind of just syncs it up essentially. And then only that that comes out of my uh, output three and four will come out of the um, the the output three and four in there and then go into my processor, which is what I want. And obviously at that point, all the feedback stopped. So that was sorted out. Um, I'm not gonna go into obviously speedy for the loop back here. Um, basically speedy is obviously is digital, uh, the digital output and um, not entirely sure what the loop back is. Uh, to be honest, I think that is a, uh, no, that's the speed of is the, uh, is the outsource clock. But then you, over here, we've got your main uh, speaker control. So um, red means it's inactive. Okay, so uh, if I put this to red, you can press, uh, let's say go seven and eight here, I don't, I don't use them. So if I press them once, it'll go to uh, active, which is blue then press them again, it'll go to red, which is inactive. Now, if you shift and click, then it will go to zero dB, so the active, but it's at a standard uh, volume. And so it will be a standard level of decibels. And that's why I've got my output three and four here as a standard level. So it's got a good level going into my, uh, into my effects processor but then I want to activate one and two because that is what's coming out of my uh, of my uh, speakers. So I want to make sure that's con uh, sorted out. Then you'll see uh, this nice big round circle here is the volume control essentially. I'm just turning the volume control on my box and it's also affecting the 
the volume control there, as you can see. But then turning that off, I'm still turning it, but it just doesn't move. So uh, that's kind of useful. But then essentially everything here, again, corresponds to what's on the front of your box here. So we've got a mute here, as I've got, I've got it muted now, so I don't get any feedback. And then you've got a direct input as well, uh, which obviously uh, reduces the level of sound that comes out. And then you've got left mute, so you can just mute the left side or mute the right side. And you've got your mono as well, which is self-explanatory. Um, in this box here, you can look at your, your sample rate, essentially. So what level of sample you want to record at. At the moment, I've got it set to 48 kilohertz, which is in standard. Uh, and then your sync source, so that's your clock. So basically, whether it's Speedif, ADAT, which is your uh, Firewire, uh, not your Firewire, sorry, uh, your Speedif, which is the digital input, and then ADAT, which is your... Um, optical input which is another di type of digital input and then you got your internal which is the one that i've got set up um then sync status is locked obviously so once it's obviously just sorted out loaded up it's locked and then obviously firewire driver which obviously is connecting to the computer through firewire and that's what i've obviously got set up here um so that's it really that's all you really need to know um you got different levels of uh, different kind of outputs here as well you can clear it. door tracking is obviously coming from your door ultra low latency tracking uh it's kind of like doors just a bit um doesn't do as latent and then you mix in and then you loop back as well um but obviously there are probably better videos than that <laughs> than mine uh so yeah i, I hope this was uh, quite informative for you thanks